This episode is sponsored by Colleen's Irish Mustard. This is a recipe that's traced back to the 1800s in Ireland. It's super good. They sent me three bottles, um, a spicy kind, uh, a normal kind, a mild kind. They're all really good and for different reasons. Uh, so go to ColleensIrishMustard.com, link in the description, and get some spicy mustard while you listen to this episode. You are now watching the best show in the universe. It is called The Anthony Rogers Show. You probably wish that this was your show. But it is not your show. It is the Anthony Rogers Show. Tell everyone you know to watch this show. Enjoy. Welcome back to the greatest show in the entire universe. Uh, today we have a huge guest. Uh, re- re- <sighs> Let me start that over. I fucked it up so bad. Sorry. Welcome back to the greatest show in the entire universe. Uh, today we have legendary musician uh, Leroy Virgil from uh, Hellhound Glory. Hellbound? Boy. Jesus Christ, I can't fucking talk, man. <laughs> Welcome back to the greatest show in the entire universe. Uh, today we have a huge guest, uh, musician Leon Virgil, and uh, Leroy. Jesus, fucking hang on, hang on. Welcome back to the greatest show in the entire universe. I, uh, I think it's all built in. I like it. <laughs> yeah, we'll put all the we'll pull all messed up ones from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> Live from a beach, I'm trapped on. Uh, <laughs> Leroy Virgil from uh, Hellbound Glory. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Yeah, it uh, looks like you're there on what's that? Uh, 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 Castaway. Yeah, it's like I, I got the beard, I got the Castaway. island, I got, I got everything. I'm, tra- I'm trapped here. I can't get off. I've been here for. I'm uh, Wilson. <laughs> yeah, I don't even have a ball. I don't have a beach ball or anything. That's kind of fucked up with the volleyball. Right here, you know, I'm literally on an island. So. Where are you at right now? Say. Oh, you know, I'd rather not go in there. I'll just say I'm on an island, Redneck Island. Well, what's your favorite credit card number now that we're getting personal? <laughs> credit card. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Credit. You won't. But, uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, I found out about your band about a week ago, man. And like, uh, I like your videos and stuff. You got a cool style. I was like, I was just kind of tearing through the like, like similar music to yours and like kind of the style of like outlaw country. I call it that, or like, uh, or just different kind of stuff like that. And like, uh, and your style is kind of like a modern adapt adaptation of that. I think more so. It's not necessarily strictly that, but I feel like that there's a lot of that in there. You know, outlaw. Well, natural born outlaw. Yeah, you get that. Gonna... Yeah, you get you have that vibe like coming across in the songs. Like, it's kind of like rockish. Kind of it's kind it's kind of a bunch of things, but just like uh, some good music. And I'll link in the description for people watching this. Uh, uh, check it out. Stop watching this episode right now and just listen to his band. Like, <laughs> I was joking. All I got eight albums out, so there's all different. Uh, every, anything you could ask for, it's all there. That's crazy, man. So how long have you been doing music then? That's a that's a lot of albums. Well, let's see. Hellbound Glory's been around about going on it'll be about 20 years in a couple months oh wow that's, that's a long time in music man it's like most people never even get past like three <laughs> most people don't even get to start a band <laughs> it just starts in their garage so that's cool man so well you know it's uh it's still fun and i can't wait to get back to it i'm yeah. not uh i'm not enjoying the time off from the road i'm looking forward to getting out there and playing some gigs making some real money you have some shows coming up in April, it looked like. I sure do. Yeah. Those would be the first ones since, I think, last April, other than a, a live stream that I did down in Reno. That's great. So did you get Dr. Fauci's permission slip? To do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, not till Friday. But, uh, but it's like, just in time. Yeah, it's like, Fauci signed my permission slip. I can, I can now go outside again. It's really <laughs> so. I'm looking forward to it. Well, you know, I've been... Uh, like I said, stuck on this damn island. Yeah, no, I know the feeling, man. Yeah, I can't wait to get off and get back to civilization. That's awesome. Yeah, no, there's... people speak English. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or at least try to, right? Well, you know, it's hard to talk about yourself when nobody <laughs> understands what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Dude, I like I like that video with uh with the girls with the shotguns and stuff. Like yeah, like a uh, like, wh- wh- which one was that? What was that called? I, like I said, I just found that it. Was called, that was called the Hellbound Blues, which yeah, I a, think is just a fucking great tune, right? I mean, it just no, it says everything about uh, you know, just listen to the damn words. It's a, a epic song, just trying to get through the night. You know, it's every sort of it's just modern day country blues, man. I'd say it puts just about every single country song 
to come out in the last 10 years to shame. That he give me goes for little whatever his name is. He did the uh, country road song or uh, you know the country rap guy. He might you not have you. You know what I'm talking about the. I want to say no, but I do know who you mean. I'm going to admit it. Yes, I, I sadly Nas X and little Nas X or some shit. Ooh, that guy, he's got nothing on old Leroy Virgil, Scum Dog Browns. No, I agree, and uh, I almost hate him as much as Billy Ray Cyrus. So that was it was a great mix for that song. Billy Gay Virus. Yeah, <laughs> that's a better name for him. It's more it's more fitting. Yeah. Yeah, gosh, you know, I, you might want to bleep that one out. I mean, no, you be real here. We know this is, yeah. This is, I say, well, no, it's just political reasons. Buddy of mine is producing an album, Billy Ray Cyrus. And uh, I don't know, he seems all right to me. I got a song I think would be great for him called No Drama. <laughs> well, I, I have a different perspective. Like, Billy Ray Cyrus ruined my childhood. Because, like, I remember riding the bus, like, all these f- stupid fucking girls were always singing on the bus, like that achy, breaky heart song. And then, like, and then he had a daughter that made even worse music. I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't do it. I just can't do it. Well, you know, I can't say as I've ever been a big fan myself, but uh, I've always had tastes that ran a little bit more towards the gritty and uh, just, you know, I mean, pop country just doesn't do it for me. And it really never has in my life. I don't know what it is. There are some great singers who are popular, who who I think are great, you know, and are on the radio and stuff. But I even listened to some pop country today and I got to say, uh, but it, it's all just weak sauce and it's all sounds like Backstreet Boys. And that even goes for, uh, you know, some of the new ones that they're pushing is having controversy and stuff. It's all just made up and I don't believe it, any of it for a second. It's all just a ball. No, I agree. It's all, yeah, it's all bullshit. I, it. I definitely I it. like, I like old country and I like outlaw country for sure. Like what, what's some artists you listen oh. to or inspire you, I guess? The, some artists that yeah, I listen to, uh, you know, as of uh, lately, let me see. You know, I listen to all kinds of music just because I'm a musician with the exception of pop country and rap. But uh, I listen to just all this stuff. I like rockabilly, blues, and old country. I like some punk rock, metal. Uh, the bands I like that are contemporaries and whatnot of, of Hellbound Glories. I like Jackson Taylor and Bob Wayne. And uh, let's see, real music that I just, that I've been listening to a lot. Elvis, Johnny Cash. I feel like Johnny Cash was the first outlaw country musician almost. Like one, one of them at least. There's a couple guys before him, I guess, but he was like the one, like one of the biggest early ones, I guess. You know, at the same time, he was you could tell a very intelligent person. He wasn't just fucking uh, uh, pandering. Huh. He was really trying to get his his soul across through his music and really trying to communicate with people rather than just sell something to people. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I definitely know what I mean. Making money was just secondary. He had something to say and he was going to say it and he was going to put it in a song and, and, uh, because he knew that was the way to get it across, something that he had to say. And you just don't hear a lot of that in many of the genres today. I don't know. I don't listen to much new music other than just uh, Hispanic, Hispanic, me- Mexican radio, was what I've been listening to a lot lately. And even that's uh, so real, and the people there are real, and it's not. Uh, it's authentic. That's the word. <laughs> that's, that's the most important aspect to art, I think, and life, I guess. But I think it's specifically in art, I think, like, you can always tell when somebody's faking it or bullshit, you know? Oh, yeah. And, and you hope that they are. You <laughs> hope they are, because if they're not faking it and bullshitting it, it and that's just really what they are, it's, then, my goodness. Yeah. Well, maybe it's because I just, I grew up in a different environment. You can listen to Hellbound Glory songs and kind of imagine what, how I grew up. Because, you know, it wasn't the image that you hear on the radio, that on um, pop country and that sort of stuff. And just the things that are important that they talk about in this stuff. 
you know, I guess love and stuff is important, but geez, there's no real substance to the music. No conviction. That's a good word, too. No, you're definitely right. And it, and it is pandering, like you're saying, too. It's basically just like, it's literally just a business plan. Like, I mean, which isn't, it's not bad to have a business plan with your music, but I mean, you should have some music with it, too, I guess, you know? Well, you know, I've had a business plan all along, and it's just been be the coolest that you can. And uh, just stay cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. So where, you said you're from Reno normal, uh, originally? Uh, you know, it's uh, Reno. Yeah, that's where Held Out Glory was born. It's cool. I've, I've been there one time. I feel like I've only been there once. Is, is that the smallest big city? Is that their slogan or something? Well, I, think, I, think, I think I saw that everywhere. The other way around. Biggest small oh, – what was it? What was it? Biggest little city. Biggest little city. Okay, yeah, I saw that everywhere when I was there. Like, they told me like a bunch. Where, is it, where do you live when you're not on the island? <laughs> I'm in uh, I'm in St. Louis area, basically the suburbs right now. Okay. Middle, St. Louis. Of, middle of the United States. Very cool. Well, what what uh what brought you to Reno? I was uh, I was a, I'm a comedian, so I did a show there like uh but oh. somewhere it was years ago. It was twenty fourteen, so I, don't, I can't remember okay. the venue sadly, but it was, was it a uh, was it a club or was it in a casino? It was like a bar. It was like a bar club, I think. Like uh, is it near the place. casinos? I don't think so. I just, it almost has to be though, because they're everywhere. So it almost had to be, yeah. I think so. Okay, was you said what year? It was 2014, and I was fucking trashed. It was like right. I don't remember exactly. I was only there for a I second. Bet I... It was a pink Third street. Was... Third street bar. Was the outside pink or something? I'm I'm trying to remember. Okay, yeah. Third Street Bar is right outside of the El Dorado, which is a very large El Dorado is what it is. Casino. That's what it was. Uh, no, that was a casino. Never mind. Okay. I, yeah, see, I'm so, yeah, I'm so see, fucking it, it the Third Street. It was right next to a big pink casino called the El Dorado. Okay, okay. Yeah, there, those name that, that name makes sense. Like I said, I was trashed there for like three I was there for like three hours. I I I hardly you know I hardly fucking like uh, I was just traveling too much at the time. I was going through like you know what I mean? I didn't get enough time yeah, to yeah. get there. I imagine I imagine that's a lot of fun being a stand-up comedian playing those places i played the same place several yes. times no it's the same job almost except for i don't have to be talented it's like <laughs> well you have to have a quick wit i suppose and uh and a way to put ideas together so i'd say that's a form of talent you know sometimes talent is the worst thing that you could have i could see that sometimes without a doubt that's funny i'd be a musician if i was more talented i think like uh, i think what you got going on is pretty cool man i think like uh I didn't think this the kind of like all well, like, shit. It's taken me 20 fucking years to even get this far. So I'd say, uh, talent, uh, isn't probably what it is, but I appreciate it for some real people. It is not for like, you know I mean, like, I think we're in a weird generation where they reward like mediocrity and like, uh, if you are authentic, you almost get like removed from like social media and everything. I mean, like they just like they censor real shit almost more so than they want everybody living in la la land and arguing about crayon colors and dumb shit all the time. They don't really want like, uh, they don't want people having human connection or anything. You know, it's, it's a weird world we're in right now. It's just like, uh, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's like a crybaby Olympic contest all the time. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I understand. I, uh, mainly just keep to my own drama create as much of it as i can <laughs> center it with me we're gonna take a break for a second um this episode is sponsored by tromega mineral blend it is like magic it is for brain and brawn the owner uh you can read a story on uh, tromega.com link in the description under the about section the owner went through some shit uh he, he was having hard problems he's super unhealthy um, and he kind of just came up with this blend and with minerals uh, and just seemed to like work magic. So if you need any kind of like immunity builders or I mean, there's so much shit. Go to uh, trollmega.com, link in the description and take care of that brain and body. That's crazy. So, yeah. Um... Reno's a hell of a town. You know, it's just it's rowdy. It's where Hell Out Glory was born. And uh, that's where it all started 20 years ago, almost. And into Reno with nothing but a dream. What was your first show? The first gig I played in Reno. Okay. What? I think it was a place called the Zephyr. Hellbound Glory. That's awesome, man. Like, and like, so, uh, like, it was like kind of a, you said it was kind of a family thing. Like, so, like, uh, were you, did you always know you want to be a musician or is it something that like just like happened or? 
pretty much from the from the moment that I uh, even thought about it, I knew I wanted to have a band and start bands and fucking be the best. It's awesome, man. That's that's cool. Just knowing that kind of like. So I feel like a lot of people are like 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 even like in their thirties and forties, like I don't know what I want to do with my life. <laughs> like it's, just- it's still it's still there. You know, it all started with my stepdad. And this is a true story. We're driving somewhere and probably 11 or 12 he was playing Nirvana Nevermind because it had had just come out and as uh, I still do to this day I was talking some shit he was talking some shit and he tells me he could do this this is easy I could play this I was like yeah right you can play this he's a guitar player no you can't play this he said yeah I can and I used to jam with the guy playing the bass. My stepdad used to jam with one of the guys from Nirvana. Huh. And so I thought if, you know, if they could do it sort of thing. You say, so your stepdad knew, your stepdad uh, jammed with Chris Novoselic, is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying, dude. That's and I ran crazy. into Chris Novoselic years and years ago, years and years later. And, uh, and my stepdad happened to be there, and I said, "Hey, you remember this guy? Is this story true?" He totally remembered it and everything. He even knew. He totally remembered my stepdad. He even remembered that he was one of the first guys to have compact discs, CDs, because huh. he because he was a, one of those just guys who has to have everything music, and uh, so so he remembered that and everything. It's, what can I say? Show business is in my blood, and years and years. Prior to that, too, I used to travel around with this guy, my stepdad, and sell cut out used CD, uh, not cut out used, but cut out CDs that they would give that you're not supposed to sell. He'd buy them from some guy and travel around to all the different shops in Aberdeen and sell these cut out CDs, bootleg CDs all over the place. So that was my start in the music business. And I'd say I was probably eight or nine back then. That's, a, that's so, awesome. That's a cool so story, it's something man. I just know all about. Something I was, it's my destiny. No, it makes sense. Yeah, some people was born to be like, like certain things. That, that totally makes sense. That's cra- That's a crazy story. Your dad jammed like Chris Nova song. He's a like legend, really, you know? Yeah, and a hell of a nice guy as well. You know, I, here's the thing that happened is uh, Chris Nova Selleck quit the little group because they did the, uh, my stepdad and the rest of the guys didn't want to take it seriously. They just wanted to get drunk and raise hell and do drugs. <laughs> and Chris wasn't having it. He had that focus. That's interesting. That's interesting, man. That's a crazy. That's just I. I didn't expect that story. That's very cool and interesting, man. Like, uh, did you? Uh, did your stepdad play? Uh, what kind of music did he play? Oh uh, yeah, just uh, m- blues metal. Blues metal. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. <laughs> uh where can people find your music and stuff like uh like like where would you tell somebody to, like listen to this to like go listen to your music guy like i'm on every single platform youtube spotify amazon itunes everywhere you can find hellbound glory that's awesome. vinyl cds the whole shebang you have good music videos too you want to catch me on an off night you can catch me at davidson's distillery in in Seattle, uh, Reno, Nevada, right there on Fourth Street, <laughs> David Sins Distillery, and Dave is a hell of a cool guy. Uh, I sure do miss Reno, really bad. Yeah, Nevada's a cool state, man. I I, I definitely like Nevada. I like driving through there and stuff, and like it seemed like a cool place. Like, yeah, it's uh. Everywhere has a different sort of mojo, but out west, just everywhere out here has a, it's something different than even out where you're at, St. Louis. Maybe it's just because people haven't been out here as long. Well, there have been people here for a long time, but just not lots and lots and lots of people. So, Have you been to Missouri before? I have. You know, I've, I've, I think I was in Missouri Shortly after my birth. That's crazy. Went through there. Yeah, my mom says, uh, right there in southern Missouri, my real father 
had a couple, a little, some property, you know, just a little stream and nothing else, just maybe a log cabin out there down in Dauphin, Doth, Doth, Donovan, maybe. Okay. Town, something like that. Yeah, there's so many fucking towns in Missouri. Especially, yeah, Southern Missouri, I don't know. I don't know the towns that well, but I've, I've been through most of Missouri, though. That's yeah, cool. it's, uh, I travel there. I don't know. My mom says that my brother's mom almost threw me off to that dam right down there, be, somewhere between uh, Missouri and Arkansas, right in that area. Okay, yeah, I know where you're at. That's funny. Yeah, you're in the, you're in the Ozarks at that point. Yeah, I guess my mom had to pry me out of this, rent his arms. And she was taking me closer and closer to the edge of the dam to throw me off in a fit of jealous rage. <laughs> that was crazy, man. And then there's poor little Chester just sitting there watching aghast. You know, he couldn't have been much more. And, uh, I guess it was a big bunch of drama. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. No, I, I love Missouri for sure. It's like, I feel the same way about Missouri you feel about Reno probably. I feel like uh, it's, it's home. it just feels right now. It's home, you know? You know, I really do like it too. Those uh, forests are beautiful out there, and the people are real nice. And but, don't tell too many uh, people that. We gotta keep it a secret so so it's not flooded with people. <laughs> keep <laughs> keep it a secret out here. Yeah, like yeah, no, it's just flyover territory. You don't want to come here. <laughs> you know. Yeah, right. You know. Uh, keep all the liberals out. Isn't that what the people in Utah think is the Garden of Eden? <laughs> yeah, the Mormons think this is paradise, and they're probably this is the, probably the only thing they're not wrong about. <laughs> yeah, uh, Salt Lake City. Oh man, it's, it's a weird it's, fucking place. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I've got some great. I played some great gigs out there as well. You ever play a gig in Salt Lake? No, no, I've been there though. Uh, I when I was when I was when I was single, that was the only town that uh that had no one on Tinder. Like it was so weird. It was so weird to me. Like it was like, uh, and then I asked people about it, and they're like, they're like, yeah, because they're all married to the same dude, or they're lesbians. That's like what I heard about the women there. I I don't know if that's true. That's just what I heard from people, someone there. Huh. That explains a lot. Yeah, because like that's the only place. Is like I I would be on Tinder everywhere, like swiping on everything just to get people to my shows and stuff. I'd use like Tinder, Facebook, all all social media. And that was just one of them I used. And wow. Like I, I, I promote. Wait, wait, what'd you say? That's great. Yeah, it's just, it's just a way to promote yourself. And, like, I do that stuff when I go to towns and stuff. And then, like, that was the only town that had nobody on dating apps or anything. That's weird. I don't know. What yeah, you fuck. know, I think some of the – some of my old band members used to do something similar on Craigslist. Yeah, it's however you get there. Yeah, it's just like a million. There's plenty of fit or whatever. I don't, I'm practically married at this point, but I'm engaged right now. So, I I'm well out of the game, about six years out of the game. So, I don't really know what the people do anymore. But I can tell, I can tell you how I was about five or six years ago. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, just a whole hell of a lot of gigs for me and a lot of traveling around from town to town. But you do get a sense of a lot of these places. See, you know, I was just thinking about that on my way here. You ever spent any time in uh, Philadelphia? I did last year, I think. No, well, I guess like this two years ago, I guess. I forgot we we're in this like whole thing where we can't travel. But yeah, no, about two years ago I was there. Not for work. That's a cool town. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of busy for me, and kind of dirty, but I do like the vibe. It's like you feel the birth of America there. Like I, like oh, I, yeah. I love that aspect of it. I did a bunch of tourist shit. I, I didn't do it. I didn't do any shows or anything. But uh, what would you think of it? Oh, it's great. People coming together and coexisting and uh, listening to lots of rockabilly, which is always cool to me. That's awesome. Yeah, I was just doing yeah. some tourist nerd shit. I was just like kind of seeing where like uh, I was re I was reading Ben Franklin's grave and feeling like an unaccomplished bastard. <laughs> like, like I was like all of his, he has like a fucking like marble slab of like all these accomplishments, and I'm like, oh my god, I need to do some of my life. Well, we might just remember it all be uh, just uh, just sand in the winds of time. No, that's real. No, it's definitely true. I don't want to uh, live you like. You know, it makes like, me feel all right. Yeah, it makes me feel better <laughs> about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, this is definitely true, man. You know, who knows how long this like thing called life has been going on on this planet? Who knows how long it's fucking been going on, man? Yeah, well, you know, I probably as long as I've been born, and who knows how long it'll go on after I'm gone. But uh, either way, it's having I'm having a good time. 
No doubt, making the best of it for sure. I always like think about that when people are like like this rocks from twenty thousand years ago. I'm like, how do you know that? <laughs> like, like how the fuck? Like, I don't know how the fuck you could prove that. Like, I mean, they say like carbon dating and stuff. It just, I mean, that's just a theory to me. Basically, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, I don't know. I don't know how anybody could prove any of that shit. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, a lot of people spend a lot of time doing it and a whole hell of a lot of time talking about doing it and then talking about <laughs> talking about doing it. Super real, yeah. Know. <laughs> Lots of people have jobs doing it, and they stay they stay busy. Uh, Zoom meetings, having <laughs> Zoom meetings, and talking about things and arguing about stuff. Yeah, basically, well, getting to know each other. So say something about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> here's who I am, and here's my experience. Here's a yeah. That's pretty much all anybody. So all right, this is pretty fun. Laughing. No doubt, yeah. a good time. No doubt, man. There's a guy. Uh, there's a guy back in the day, like Philip Gosse. He claimed that um, the devil put dinosaur bones in the ground to make the world seem older than it is. <laughs> I thought that theory was funny. I've heard that one. Yeah, I didn't. It's as plausible as any of the other ones. Oh, fair. Yeah, it just sounds. It just sounds funny. But yeah, I don't fuck it. I don't know what happened. <laughs> like, I'm just like. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I don't care. <laughs> That's funny, man. No, you have like that. You have that vibe of a country singer. It's funny, man. I don't think I've ever talked to an actual. <laughs> country, I don't think I've ever talked to an actual country singer before. I, I've listened to a lot of it, but I've never actually had a conversation with one. I don't think. You got that vibe. Well, you know, I'm in a special mood. Who knows? <laughs> Sometimes I can turn it on and just go for it. No, it's not. It's the artist thing, man. That's what. The, that's what you guys do. That's what we do. You know. My uh, my fiance's like grandpa plays steel guitar, so I've like seen like um, like I guess I, I guess he's a country musician too, like, but he's got a band and stuff. That that's like family, so it's like a little bit different. But the first stranger country musician I know, <laughs> how about that? Well, country is a long tradition, going way back. The sound changes, but the uh, spirit's always there, and that's the thing. They're doing their best to kill it with the modern shit. The real spirit of real people doing real things. But Hellbound Glory is alive and will be around forever. Did you hear about that? You, you, probably, you probably don't follow all the My Wild Antics, but I took the copyright trademark for the name Hellbound Glory, which was in some dispute, but I got back. I fucking burned the thing. I'm giving Hellbound Glory to the world. People make your own t shirts. Do whatever you want. Start a band called Hellbound. I could give it a flying fuck. It's <laughs> the of the world now. I don't want any part of it. Well, just don't stop me from being Hellbound. That's hilarious. So, so what? I, yeah, no, I just found out about you about a week ago. It was like uh, one of the one of the. I was telling you that Irish, uh, like that Irish mustard company was telling me about. They're like, uh, I was like, do you have anybody in particular you uh, you want for your episode or something like that? And they specifically named named your band. And then I just, I, so I'm just going down that rabbit hole now. I just started the Hellbound Glory rabbit hole on the internet, going down and check. It's like you have someone, like you said, you have like 20 years of content. So I'm just, I'm, uh, it's kind of awesome to find a band that you can go back that far. But um, no, what, what was so what happened with the copyright thing? What was what was that story? Well, years and years ago, uh, the band name was Trademarked, Hellbound Glory. thought it was such a cool, badass band name. They need to trademark it before somebody steals it. Well, I wasn't in charge of the part that got trademarked. But I got it back. And I burned it. <laughs> I wanted it. Hellbound Glory to be public domain out there in the world. I don't want to own it. I want to just, I, what I'm hoping, I don't want to make merchandise. I don't want to have to spend time doing all that stuff. I want people to make their own Hellbound Glory merchandise and come up with cool designs and sell them themselves. They could have, so they could make a t-shirt, write Hellbound Glory, right, and sell it. That's Somebody funny. else who wants to buy a Hellbound Glory shirt because people hit me up all the time saying, where can I buy merch? Where can I buy merch? I don't know. I don't feel like sending this merch off and i don't feel like going and dealing with any of it i want somebody else to do it <laughs> and i don't even need any money from it i would do it all right i don't i know how to hustle my way through this life dude that's so yeah, funny i've never i've never heard this that. is a fucking pain in the ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, yeah it's like you want to play music not start a clothing company that's uh I, I that's hilarious i've never heard that fucking point of view like or at least publicly that's kind of funny man like uh 
I, I like that aspect. And that's very American. It's very like kind of like that. It's uh, that's like the American, like the like the punk rockness of America, you know. Well, I hope so. I, it sounds kind of batty when I try to get it across, but like I said, it's just something out of convenience. But I, I don't, I don't want to travel around and sell a bunch of stuff. I mean, that's something my stepdad has to do. <laughs> I play the guitar. I sing, and people just give me their money and everything that they got. That's good. I'll be happy. No, we got. That's hilarious, man. Like, oh, that's that's funny. Like, I remember my buddies were in like a reggae band, and like, uh, they would, uh, or they used to be, and they, like, they would play a show, and then like, everybody'd be asking for shirts afterwards, and they just push them off on other people. Like, oh yeah, go ask, uh, go ask, blah blah blah, and then blah blah. blah. Oh, go go ask him. So nobody was ever buying shirts because musicians don't want to do that shit. I feel like, but uh, you're the first guy to be like, <laughs> you're the first guy to be like, I'm just not doing it. I've never heard someone say that. They're like, I'm just not gonna do it. <laughs> not only am I not doing it, I want someone else to and take the money they could have it they don't even have to be affiliated with help and people do it anyways it's already online you can get a help out glory shirt you know there's people bootlegging them already That's so get in on that bootleg money bootleg help out glory merch sell it bring it to the shows and sell it i don't care <laughs> Dude, that's make a little money i'll pay for your ticket <laughs> after they cost that much it'll pay for your fucking beer Dude, that's so funny i've, I've literally never heard that angle in music that's hilarious <laughs> Well, it it came to me just out of sheer laziness and just uh, not really caring. But that's my style. That no, shit's funny, man. What's your what's your like favorite part of this whole ride you've been in, in in the band? Like, what's like your what's your favorite Hellbound Glory story? Favorite Hellbound Glory story. I was thinking about a lot of different stories. Let me think. You know, there's a very funny one I could, I could tell. Which is very. This is a. Is this a comedy podcast? Uh, sometimes I don't know. It doesn't have to be. It can be. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an excuse to bullshit with people. It's uh, uh, just um, a best excuse to talk to like famous people, cool people, porn stars, whatever. And I kind of dig it so far. Okay, let me think of a good Hellbound Glory. Hellbound Glory. Where have we been? That's not a Hellbound Glory story. All right. Let me think about this. I'm drawing a blank, my friend. I'm, I put you on the spot like that. Yeah, I guess I put you on the spot. <laughs> I'm just, there, there's too many to tell. They're all, most of the good ones are really embarrassing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Get somebody else to tell them. I promise you, there's a lot of them out there. That's hilarious. All right, I'll tell a story about pre-Hellbound Glory. The pre-Hellbound Glory days, traveling around with my buddies since I have been back in that part of the world. Uh, so we got these fake IDs so that we could play in bars, me and my buddies. And probably about 16 years old, we go down to San Francisco to play some gigs and across the street from the club we're playing there's a place called the Lusty Lady well we got fake IDs we can go in let's go so I'm imagining something out of a Beverly Hills cop or something like a strip club dancing girls but it wasn't like that so we get our quarters handful of quarters and we <laughs> go to this we're led in this little place and there's all these fucking booths we're going to the booth and there's a little squirt it's a uh, a window that's covered and a, a coin machine so you know, i'm guessing i take the quarter i put it in the machine and all of a sudden the screen opens and there's a bunch of dancing naked gals in this place mm -hmm. just going for it I go, holy shit, I go to put the next quarter in, and it falls. Well, I reach down to grab it and come up all over my hand. Ah! Ah! Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it was not. I got out of there. I haven't been <laughs> back to any, <laughs> any place even remotely like that. I will not even go to strip clubs. It. I've been... Uh, what is it? Post-traumatic stress. <laughs> it's ruined my life. 
That's crazy. That's so fucked up. That's crazy. Yeah, like I guess I don't think about shit like that. So like it makes sense after you say it, but it's fucking you don't think about that. I guess. Well, I was 15, 16 years old. I really didn't know too much about the ways of the fucking world at that time, or the yeah. ways of San Francisco. You yeah. know. It's just, <laughs> But it was a hell of a gig. We had some damn good times. Me, Lance, Joe, and Jason playing all across America before we could even be in a bar. Fake IDs, buddy. I remember those just days. Just to play some music. Just because just we wanted to play music. No, that's funny. I I remember the fake ID days. I made a uh, – well, it was easier in my generation. We had, we had uh, scanners and shit, so I made my own. Like It was like a – I like uh, I, I made a Canadian ID because I figured nobody around would know what a Canadian ID looked like. So so it's like easier to pass. It's like uh, wow, like that's if, smart. if I made a Missouri one, it'd be like, oh yeah, that's fake. <laughs> Give me like so I made like a Canadian one so people didn't know and like uh, it was interesting. It was a weird. I remember the fake ID days. I did I did it just to drink and be a piece of shit. I wasn't I, I didn't even try it life until like later. <laughs> like you're, well, you're, hear you. you're already playing music. You're playing music at fifteen, sixteen already. Oh yeah. That's just crazy. Setting up tours, just running around with my buddies who had licenses, running the show. That's badass. So, huh? That's cool. Making it happen. Yeah, it was a pretty rocking band, too. Probably could have done something if we weren't such little degenerates. <laughs> That's funny, man. I, yeah, um, I think I got my first guitar at 16, but I, I didn't end up becoming talented, so it didn't matter. <laughs> it was just like. That's what you're already playing fucking shows that is just crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not only that, but touring, playing gigs. That's crazy. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> well, you know, uh, my folks gave me drug tests up until I got out of junior high, and after that, I was free to do whatever the hell I wanted. That's crazy. But uh, so I just went for it. That's awesome, man. Every. Uh, lots of adventures and having fun. That sounds like it, man. That's Playing a, gigs. That's a great. That's a you great. You know, I mean, obviously, obviously, it was not without some uh, some uh, uh, what is it? Uh, bad experiences or whatever. As I was talking about that other one. <laughs> uh, I wasn't too bright back then, but now I'm a man of the world, so they won't be tricking me no more. <laughs> that's funny, man. Well, dude, yeah, um, that is fuck pretty uh, pretty embarrassing, right? But what did I say? I was, I was a just a country boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, man. Well, uh, do you want to throw any like um, any any way people would find you or something? I thought we'd talk for forever, but I keep this episode kind of like. Kind of where it's at. and you should come on again honestly dude like you're you're actually cool as shit man um is, where, where do you want to throw on any like social media or anything like that where people could follow you yeah. and you know this goes back to the merch thing <laughs> it's just <laughs> it it's pretty easy to find type hellbound glory into it the google and listen to any way you want and there's all sorts of every single platform has different stuff i haven't been too precise in how i make it happen but i'm learning look i figured out i figured out how to do this <laughs> yeah that's true you know i this is a step in the right direction i i don't i don't know i'm looking forward to getting back out on the road and racing hell and driving my old cop car maybe i'll get another cop car if i have a little extra money Oh yeah, man. Well, uh, check out Hellbound. Cop cars, a whole fleet of Hellbound Glory cop cars. <laughs> Pull over the cops. Right? <laughs> That's not. I was thinking the same thing the other day. Uh, I've had pretty good luck driving a cop car. Maybe I ought to go undercover. Right? <laughs> like <laughs> Elvis. Like Elvis did. You know, he was a narcotics agent. Yeah, he was. He was. I, I think like uh, that. That that's a lot of the reason. Like I, I'm, I I tend to believe he did fake his death because like uh the the mafia definitely went down in Vegas around the time Elvis was a narcotics agent there and like doing shows and stuff. And 
like I, I heard a bunch of stories that people the mob would used to just brag to Elvis about it they'd brag about all their crimes and shit and like you just like fucking roll over on him and then like his name is great his name was spelled wrong on his grave because he was superstitious I heard and then like this is, this is I don't what? have proof of this but it, it, his, his name was spelled wrong on his grave originally like his middle name Aaron it was spelled wrong and like uh and he's rich and he was like rich as fuck so it didn't make sense like I heard that was some I, that's just some shit I heard I don't have any evidence on the anything wow I'm I heard he was no, that him. sounds like it could all very well be truth, knowing what I know about Elvis. It does sound like it, yeah. I just don't, that's what, I feel that's true, but I don't like I said I don't have evidence. But you no, know, like, I absolutely can see it because the government took took Vegas around that time. The government took Vegas around seventy seven when Elvis Elvis uh, died or whatever. So it's like really interesting, and like and they said such an absurd story. He was going to deny it, died on the toilet. It's just a weird story. I mean, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that probably happened. Like, you know, it's just it's just the more absurd, the the less people question almost. Wow, I had never thought of that. He, it's, he faked his death. Is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm guessing that. I don't know this, but I, I've heard this from people that, um, yeah, you uh, rolled over on the mob in Vegas, basically, and that's around the time the government took over Vegas. So, I mean, it makes sense to me. I mean, time. So he had to go sense. into hiding. Yeah, basically, because like, and uh, yeah, that's what I feel like. And there's been a lot of stories of, of just like, I mean, it's always been rumored that he did, and like, there's, there's a couple artists that make sense. Like people would be like, Tupac faked his death, but I've seen pictures of him shot with bullets. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like I've seen like photos of him and like like and but uh, Jim Morrison's the only other person that makes sense to me that faked his death. Like that's a, a, uh, it's the only other one that makes sense because like they never saw his body. Um, he was up against a lot of charges, indecency charges. I mean, he fled to Paris first, and then like uh, because basically like that he showed his dick on stage or something allegedly. I don't know what the fuck he did, but like that he, that was the story, and like uh, that was a big no-no in the '60s apparently. Uh, not, Marilyn Manson made a fucking career off it, but, <laughs> but fucking, uh, but, uh, but, uh, Morrison did that. And apparently like, uh, like his grave's too short, apparently too. Like Morrison was a taller guy <clears throat> and his grave in Paris was too short or something too. And like, and like, there's this book, the keyboard player wrote, um, Ray Manzarek wrote this book called, uh, Poet in Exile, where a guy named Yim, it was like, y, it was a Y instead of a J, uh, Yim basically, um, was in a famous band, escaped to the Seychelles Islands and basically faked his death and moved to the Seychelles Islands and lived there and had like a wife and kids and shit. It was weird. Wow. I guess that uh, keeps the dream alive, don't it? Yeah, at the very least. At the very least, yeah. But, but I feel like Elvis and Morrison are the two people I kind of clicked that it could make sense. Like, I've heard those stories about everybody that's ever fucking been. Everybody that's They're ever both been badass, too. They're my favorites in rock, probably. Like, two of my favorites. You know, I got to agree with you. You know, there's imagine just the mixture that they could have made. Elvis would have sang some The Doors. How cool would that have been? They almost have the same kind of voice, like that, that Frank Sinatra croon kind of thing. They do. Imagine that. Like, all this just making it happen. You never know if guys like that would would uh would fucking be like best friends or worst enemies though. You never you just never know like like what extreme <laughs> end is like they're both just like guys that got super fucked up all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like I wish you would like to party with them. No, no doubt, man. Like, there, there's some night, some nights Jim Morrison sounds fun. Other nights he sounds annoying. It depends on where I'm at. Like, you know, I I understand what you're saying. You know, some of the stories that go around, but you know, partying with somebody is isn't holding hands. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's real. That's real. And and like I feel like like Cobain's up there artistically, but he just seemed boring. Like I wouldn't want to hang out with Kurt Cobain. Like it just seems boring. Like, but I I listen to his well, albums. I'm, you know, I was I. I People told Corey that he had that Kurt Cobain was at some of the parties, and that just nobody remembers him. He was just so boring that everybody <laughs> just doesn't remember him at all. He was there, but he just was in the background. Yeah, that's how he, he seems. Being there. Great musician, but that's how he seems. Is like a, like a, he was funny in like interviews or like thirty seconds here or there. But I just felt like he just would have fucking he would he would have made me shoot myself in the face like hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, partying with them probably. But he uh, was one of those dudes. Yeah, he's just a true artist or whatever. Yeah, no doubt. I feel, like, I feel like I'll just talk for nine more hours. We got to fucking, this podcast is fucking forever. Like, we, <laughs> I would be able to upload it. I, hear you. <laughs> well, I, I get it. Well, you know, I'm a little out of it, if you know what I mean. No, me too. I, I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if it's kind of spacey and it's not entertaining, I don't mind trying again. No, I don't think I think it's great, but I, I also want to do another. Yeah, I would like to have you on again too, man. It's like, uh, just like, uh, no, it was good, man. Um, 
next time we'll do a we'll do a thing where we, we'll review your music together. I'll, I'll have it on the screen while we're listening to your music or some shit. <laughs> Sweet, Bastard Child. That's one of the best ones. Bastard Child's a great song. Uh, Hellbound Blues, Streets of Aberdeen, Damned Angel. Uh, there's nowhere like Reno. Where see if that matches your blurry vision. Uh, the newest album, Pure Scum, is it's a whole entire story album. You know, none of the songs are great by themselves, but if you listen to them all together, it's one of those albums. But uh, yeah, let's review some of these albums. Yeah, let's do that soon. Like, well, th- yeah, dude, thanks for coming on, man. Like, uh, look up oh, Hellbound nice. Glory. Um, make your own Hellbound Glory T-shirts and sell them. Uh, scalp them, whatever you, uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever you want. Uh, thanks yeah, for before- listening. What are you saying, sorry? I'll be uh, before you go. I'll show you the view off the island. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, I'm down. Take a look. Tell me what you see. It's messing up a little bit, like uh, with it. Wait, how about the sound? The color is weird on the on the phone, I think. But they, I can see, I get a gist of it. That's crazy. No, no. I think the phone fucked up, dude. But that was uh, yeah. I saw part, I saw part of it there. Like it was like uh, uh-uh. the colors are all weird. Yeah, it's pretty cool, dude. All right, well, thanks uh, for having me, dude. For sure, dude. Thanks for coming on, man. Uh, you're badass, dude. Yeah, we'll have you on again sometime, man. I appreciate it. Very sweet. All right, dude. Later. And her final sponsor for the episode, Nate's More Better Hot Sauce. Fucking get some. Go to morebettersauce.com. Try it out. He sent me some of it. It was fucking good. It is uh, homemade sauce that he makes. Uh, I had the habanero guave hot sauce. It's like 10 bucks. Go to morebettersauce.com. Link in the description to get some sauce.